He's a, they're so trusting, aren't they? Dogs. Can you see why he gets called pig? He's got no hair. I'm getting out something that's already out here, I think. Um, for, for I thought maybe we'd do it with charcoal. This paper works best with charcoal, just for little piggy sketches. He's hard to capture, but we'll try. He'll be moving around. Boop, boop. Sit. Good boy. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Just trying to get nose. He's going to move any second now. I love his neck. He's got such a beautiful neck. But it's good if you like if you have to keep doing stuff really fast, because it stops you being too precious about the drawing. You've been painting for a really long time now. It's over 30 years. Is it, is it something that you see has changed a lot from when you first started you know, painting and drawing probably as a, as a child or as a, young, as a young person and throughout your work? Is it something that you feel has changed and had stages or does it feel like it's the same kind of process? I can see the seed of my own work now in a drawing I did when I was three and a half. I, really? Yeah, totally. I can see it and go, I could see myself the way I am now in that drawing. That's fascinating. Yeah. Obviously you develop your skill mm -hmm. as, as an artist and your interests in different things. Your interests change, mm. but certain things remain, there's a const, there's, there is a constant in your interests, like the you know, teeth, hair, light, all those kind yeah. of things. And Things that I you know, find funny like feet when they hit the ground and like whether they be animals' feet or just, and even trees, where, the, where a tree trunk comes to the ground. It's quite, it's interesting that connection between the ground and like when, when you see a big tree and yep. its base mm -hmm. at the ground, you think, isn't that mad? Like the ground's like this and then all of a sudden, boom, there's something going in a different direction. Way I can really express myself very easily and I think probably quite well is painting. Art school was absolutely brilliant. You were able to see practicing artists teaching you yeah. and you were able to have the idea that it was possible to be an artist in this world mm. and you know it was doable. You could do it. You weren't just in pixie land you That's know true. doing it. So it was absolutely essential to go to art school and have that community. This one's not in the show. Oh, take that off. <laughs> Come on, get off. That, that, really, seriously, what is that? You're being naughty. <laughs> I'm like useless, I'm a terrible mum. I'm gonna like, have it. He's spoiled. Do you think he's spoiled? Do you think he's too spoiled? <laughs> So when you're painting a portrait, is that something that you, uh, you know, you, you do many times until you get it just right? I mean, obviously, when you're painting someone like Barry Humphreys, I guess that's different, perhaps, to painting a child that you might have seen on the street. But is there a particular process you go through when you're painting a portrait? When I usually choose people from the street, uh, I've chosen them because their face has this particular something that, that really grabs me. It's just someone will have a look or something about them that I can't put my finger on that just feels like it, I, I can make a picture of them. And it might just be a look they have in their eyes or their hair or just the shape of their face from a certain angle and that'll be what draws me to them. Mm. People are interesting, especially 
You know, some people, there's someone I've seen recently in this neighbourhood where I can see this person from 100 metres away and go, that's an interesting person. And the more they get closer, they're still interesting. And then when you start talking to them, you find out they're really interesting. Mm. There's something about certain people, whether it's the front or the back or the side, that draws you to them, that makes you want to make a picture. Mm. I sometimes struggle recognising people's faces, which is very strange for someone who's supposed to be a visual person, right? Mm. Isn't it? Mm. But it's almost like I'm looking at them like they're a cloud. I'm often looking at a face like it's an object, mm. not necessarily a, I'm obviously not using the same part of my brain that mm. normal people would be to look at someone's face. Yeah. And that's why sometimes I can't recognise people, that's which is a bit odd, isn't it? Well, I think that's quite, that's quite illuminating actually in terms of your work because, yeah, faces are clouds or trees or there's all sorts of, for me, when I see them, there's all these layers or different readings between things and a, a tree could be a face, could be a cloud. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing when people, I, when I've tried to teach drawing a few times and when people are, go wrong, I can see if they're trying to draw someone's face, mm. if they want to make a realistic drawing, they go, oh, these are the eyes and they make a drawing of the eyes because they think they're looking at eyes. Yeah. But I try to tell them, imagine that's not a face. Imagine it's just a collection of shapes. Just think of the shapes relationship to each other. You talk about shapes quite a lot actually, like you, I've, I've you know, read uh, you writing about your work and you're talking about it's a collection of shapes or the yeah. way the shapes move. Is yeah, it? shapes and patterns I guess, like people who are really good at maths see maths in patterns often mm -hmm. or people with phenomenal memories, they mm -hmm. have, they think of these shapes and mm -hmm. stuff. But the way I work, it's suddenly all the shapes form a picture. And the shapes are obviously moved into a space where I can actually put them down into a picture. Yeah. Isn't that weird? That's great. Yeah. I can't see unless I have this kind of concept or just a feeling that it's going to work in my soul. Mm. It's funny, isn't it? Mm. You can have the best work ethic in the world and if the picture's not working, you're stuffed because it's got to be about love. Mm. You've got to love the subject. You've got to love the painting for it to work. And if, if things are not working in the love department, then forget it. If you're going well, you just go, everything else goes in the hold pattern. Even if the doorbell rings, don't answer it. Don't answer the phone. Just if you're on a roll, you've got to just keep going. And how, how, like, long, how long would a roll last potentially? Well, look, I used to go for like hours at a go without a break. But these days I like to go up, have a cup of tea and then look at it again because you can go, what was I thinking? You know, I'm going to have to change that all or... or it's good to have, it's like a reboot. Mm. Uh, you've got to start painting to feel that it's all going in the right spot. You can have, I've had days where I thought, oh, this is going to be a piece of piss. And then it's just like been a nightmare. It's been terrible. Yeah. But other days where I thought, oh, I'm not so sure about this. And once you get going, everything works. So, mm. but you get a feeling about, right, I've got, I know how this picture is going to work. You're not sure about the specifics, but you know it's going to work and you have the confidence to keep pushing it as well. And there's a certain point with some pictures that you've got to tell the picture, nah, I'm running this show. So, like, don't misbehave. Really? Yep, you got to be the disciplinarian. So the light, and I made all of this so that, you know, strung it up and everything. You can alter the light because if, you, if I'm painting over there, I don't want any light coming from behind because it reflects in the painting. So, you will. Because see those lights there? I use those lights. So if it's a dark day, I can get the same light coming onto my palette and stuff. Because you've got to be able to see your palette with the same light, right? So it's got to have the same light on the palette as on the painting. Otherwise, if you're going for the palette and the light's completely different, then you don't know what you're doing, right? And if the light goes up and down, up and down, which it does, 
stats to back it up. And uh, Bill set that up for me. We just like did it by eye to match the daylight with the outside. It's not technical, but it actually works better than any other light I've found for painting. Can you look at this setup? It took so long to set up. It, I don't know how you can just set it up in another place. And I did have a lot of, I did have that struggle when I was painting el elsewhere. But the paintings I did over there were good. So, I don't know. So can we talk a little bit about light? I was wondering if you had a favourite kind of light or if there's particular moments of light that just turn you on or if it's just, it could be That's it. anything. There's particular moments and you go, you're standing in front of the window and you go, oh, look at that. Or you go on a walk and you go, everything's looking amazing. Mm -hmm. And you cannot predict when that's going to happen. But the light that inspires you is very much outdoors. You know, it's like... Uh, I, I, this is how I understand yeah. it, is that you, you're very much inspired by things that are out in the world, yeah. in your environment, but then you bring that back to quite a controlled space of the studio yeah. and that's how you work. In an ideal world, I'd, be, I'd have all my paints set up outside and I'd be going, right, paint this when, and the light would do just what I wanted to mm. at the right moment. Mm. But that doesn't often happen that way. You can get your kit together and you head out mm. and... Um, trying to find a spot where someone's not going to try and squeeze behind you and start chatting, mm. which is like, I understand why. It's flattering that people are interested, but if, if you're writing in your diary and someone was leaning over your shoulder going, oh, why'd you put that word? Or, it's not so easy. <laughs> that's, it doesn't, you can't concentrate. Yeah. So that's a problem. And the way that you work is often to photograph things sort of as you're mm. walking around is that yeah. a is that a really conscious process or are you just kind of taking photos I of everything? I can't help it so when I was in Sydney recently the light was beaming down on the back of this man as he was walking a little old man shuffling through some mall and I'm going oh quick look at that I can't help it but quick where's my camera? Did you capture him? Um, I think I haven't even had a chance to look at that stuff yet but I think I would have got the memory of him and then sometimes you see things like there was a little old man outside his house the other day when I was walking the pig and I'm like god that's so fantastic I so so that might end up in a picture one day but it was like there wasn't a chance to get a camera out but it might you know it, it he will end up in a picture somehow and that's sort of stored in your in your yeah. memory yeah so, yeah okay yeah so there's a mixture between these kind yeah. of photographs and memory yeah snaps like yeah that. and sometimes people move into a situation that gels with what you're interested in and then they move out of it mm. do you know like yeah. all of a sudden things gel when i'm working on something delicate sometimes i choose a brush that is really in a bad way because i might just use the hair on the side of it and I just have to kind of feel that it's in the right spot rather than using something like this and getting it right in the exact spot. I can just ask it, I'd say. With the palette, the reason why I've got it all like this is because I just keep, you know, keep coming back, but I like to know where all the paint is. So it's sort of like a keyboard. I know where all the keys are. So when I'm painting, I don't have to think, oh, where, where is the cadmium yellow? I know where it is. So I can just reach for it without thinking, which is that's why I let it dry and then I put it in the same place every day. And if you'll notice, my palettes over the years are very similar, aren't they? Although I've added a few more colours because there are some colours you can't make. It's not just red, green, yellow. There are some pigments that you just can't make with Say, for example, manganese blue, I think this is, and that's this pigment that no longer exists. So I bought a whole lot of it, but I don't think you can buy that pigment anymore. The colours that uh, dry fastest make the tallest bungle bungles. And I get three of these because I like to keep the white really clean, you know. So if I know that if I'm dipping in the middle one, I've used a bit of pink with like red with that. So that's going to have a bit of taint of red in it. So... I just like to keep them clean and then that's the, just like use that for the serious white situations, right? When you're doing a snow painting, it's 
really difficult because you've got to start with white as opposed to black because if you want white to be white you have to start with only white because once you introduce another color it's just going to mix with the white and the white's gone what you have to just start with only white when you're making a white picture just a fleck of anything else in it it just goes all over the whole picture so that's a disaster and the other one you've got to watch out for is and i don't even have it on this palette oh i do i think uh, is magenta you've got to be very careful with magenta it's a frightening color and it goes everywhere so yeah there is certain colors and yellows will just take on any other color you have to paint them first so if you're doing a painting with all yellow and white, the papal colours, it's um, really difficult to make the painting without causing the yellow to get in the white. And, mm. Mm. But these are the things you discover by trial and error, just making a picture. That's why I said to Anna before, you just got to, if don't worry about shit, just start making a picture and let it work itself out as you're going along and never be afraid to just kill it. Just wipe it off. A motto for life, isn't it? If it's not good enough, wipe it.